So with AMD having genuine support for PLP, Portrait Landscape Portrait, with the R9 285 in the 15.3 and now 15.4 beta driver, we're gonna take a look at what it's like to set up PLP with three widescreen displays. So in preparation for this video, I've already set up the three displays. I've already gone into the Windows Display Properties, and I've rotated the outer two monitors in portrait configuration. So everything is prepped and ready to set up the Ifinity grouping. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into the AMD Catalyst Control Center. I'm gonna to go to AMD Ifinity Multi Display, and I'm gonna say Create Ifinity Display Group. You can see here that it offers support for standard mixed rotation, which is what they're calling PLP, as well as the previously supported mixed dimension and mixed alignments. So we're gonna say that we're gonna use the current arrangement since I already have everything preset. And then we're gonna go next. So you can see here that it's cleanly and easily set the affinity grouping with PLP. On the outer portrait monitors, we have really thick black bars at the top and bottom for some extreme letterboxing. So here in the AMD Catalyst Control Center, we can see that the three displays are set up. We could go in and adjust bezel compensation. If the monitors were not in the right order, we could um, rearrange the displays. So with three widescreens, we have a pretty large gap physically between the tops and bottoms of the outer monitors to the center monitor. The other option that you can do, which may work well if your monitors are closer in size and resolution, is you can resize desktop and move from fit to expand, and if I click next here, you can see how it fills everything and how it's filling in the voids here above and below the middle widescreen. So if your monitors are closer together in size, AMD does offer the options to either create voids above your middle landscape monitor, or as we showed before, having the extreme letterboxing on the outer left and right. So with three widescreens, this here is obviously what most people are going to choose. And looking here at the resolution, again, without any bezel compensation in place, this is 4080 by 1080p, which is significantly wider than 21 by nine, which is 2560 by 1080p at this vertical height. But it's also significantly smaller than full triple wide, which is 5760 by 1080p. So next we're gonna take a look at a few games and see how they run and how they perform. So I'm here in Guild Wars 2. You can see how the HUD is really taking up like a center third of the whole width. It's not even going to the full 16 by nine or to the edges. This would be um, a great time to have a spanned HUD actually to keep all of this stuff really out here at the edges. If I open up chat, you can see how it it covers the weapon swap here, um, and that's as, as small as it will go if you widen it out. It covers up some of your um, attacks here. So that obviously would pose a difficulty. If you go into the options and you set the interface size to small, that does take it out of your way here a little bit. Um, and at the smallest size, it's not covering up the weapon swap. Um, I so looking here with the map, um, especially at a larger size, I do find it to be in the way a bit. I guess if it's shrunk down in kind of a widescreen itself, it's not too bad. The items here for your achievements, if you're tracking any of those, um, or what's going on here in, in the region or the area that you're in, uh, and some of the other info is in the way, and I do find it a bit distracting. You can minimize some of this stuff. You can actually turn the achievement tracking off and then you can turn off the My Story piece. So it's, it's not as bad with all of that minimized, but it's still not optimal. Um, who knows if uh, ArenaNet or anybody else would come up and optimize for this setup. You know, we're just now getting to where uh, most of our games support standard multi-monitor properly. Um, and with this being brand new on the market, it would probably be a while before we had something that would support this configuration as well natively. With something like Lord of the Rings Online, which has a fully customizable HUD where you can move things freely, that would be a better option here. The 
R9 285 from Club 3D, their Royal Queen. Seems to be working pretty well. Uh, I have it on auto detect settings. The game looks pretty good and we're running at about 60 frames a second, a little more, a little less. Obviously not in any heavy combat, but the card does seem capable at this point. Here we have Torchlight 2, a title that I always love showing off for Affinity because of how well it uh, supports Affinity with its auto map and some other unique features. So it has fully detected 4080 by 1080. Um, every detail is on and available. The HUD is spanned like we would expect. Over here on the left hand side we have our hero or avatars information and then we have the pet character in arcane statistics panel. On the right we have the mini map and then we have our inventory skills and quests like we're used to seeing. We do see the uh, normal HUD that we use and um, activate our skills and powers, mana and health pools is all here centered. The thing that I really like about Torchlight 2 that we've looked at it 21 by 9 and Affinity is what they did with the map here. So if you press M, you can see the map here in the center. I can zoom in and out, make it larger. But if I hit M again, it goes to the left. And then finally over here to the right. And so we can see that just like they've done in previous games, or I'm sorry, just like it's done in previous resolutions and aspect ratios, the map is fully usable. Um, and helpful. So we can run around here and this is a uh, map that does have some creatures on it and we have a decent amount of activity here without any combat or fighting. We're running at 60, 70 frames a second when we do get into some combat. Um, we're at 40, 50 frames a second. So the R9 285 here is running pretty well. We have everything maxed out and we're running 45 to 60 frames or so uh, when running around or in combat. Here is Lego Marvel by Telltale. We've got it running right now at 1080p. So we're gonna flip over to running at 4080 by 1080. I'm gonna set the aspect ratio to from screen res, and then we'll accept. We can see here that the game works and supports a resolution pretty well. The map is over on the left-hand side there, so it's kinda of out of the way. Your character's here. Um, you can see their icons and their health. In older Telltale games, the HUD was fixed on a not quite 16 by nine, and so these would get cut off. You'd only see about the bottom half on a traditional Ifinity setup. So from here, we're gonna run around. We can see that the game is chugging along at 90 or so frames a second. And here we are. So we're on the ground, lots more objects, foliage, uh, studs, people. We're still clocking along at 55, 65 frames a second in general. Uh, some dips down into the 40s. The R9 280 is doing a pretty good job here. Sorry, the R9 285, uh, again from Club 3D, their Queen Ace is doing a pretty good job here. This would be a great game to have FreeSync on because it's dipping up and down around 60 hertz and we're seeing some tearing here. But all in all, the game works well at POPI Affinity and we'll take a look at something else. Here is Sniper Elite 3. We're running on the high preset with Mantle at 4080 by 1080p. That resolution popped up automatically as natively supported in the game. So we will jump in here and see how the benchmarking goes. I ran this on medium 
and it produced an average of 79.3 FPS. So you, we'll see what it does here on high. So average FPS of 62.8 with a maximum frame rate of 81.9. So pretty good performance here off of a single R9 285. Here is Rayman Origins. So we're gonna adjust out of 1080p to the 4080 by 1080. HUD is blown up, um, enlarged, as we saw on Ifinity. So here we will try out the first levels uh, in the game, you can see that we're hitting the max edge here of what's rendered on, on the background. It's uh, about 21 by 9, maybe a little wider than 21 by 9. So we'll go here into this title, or into this level. So we'll test here. There was one part when we tested in Ifinity where you couldn't get to... Um, the exit at one part of the level due to the wide aspect ratio. So we'll test here and see if that is still an issue at the portrait landscape portrait affinity. So that part was just here off to the right. So we see this edge here that's flickering on the very right side and we cannot make it out without adjusting the resolution and the aspect ratio back down to 16 by nine. So we can see that like Ifinity, um, traditional three by one Ifinity, we're gonna continue to have some of those same problems in games where areas may not be accessible due to um, the aspect ratio. Here is the heaven demo benchmark from Unigen that everybody's familiar with. This is version 2.5. I ran a full benchmark run at medium settings at 4080 by 1080 and ended at an average of 32 frames a second. As we've come to expect, or as we've seen, um, both demos from Unigen, the Heaven and the Valley demo, support multi-monitor and virtually any aspect ratio that you throw at them perfectly. This is the Unigen Valley demo benchmark tool. I ran a full uh, run on it on medium settings like I did with Heaven. And here we got a Average 35 frames per second with DX11 medium settings and 2X anti-aliasing.
So here we are in Bioshock Infinite. I've got the R9 285 Royal Queen from Club 3D loaded. You can see the HUD here is again pulling a middle third out of the full setup and not out on the edges of the 16 by 9. few hitches there in the frame rate as we transition. But in general, the game seems to be running in the uh, 60 to 70 frames per second rate, dipping down into the 50s for some instances. But all in all, the card seems to be able to handle it okay here on high settings at 4080 by 1080. You can always dip down to medium or customize the settings if you wanted.